are not going crazy. You just have a mind that is far, far more based on innocence than you might realize. We are tender, naive folk, detecting deception according to our ancient Gnostic ancestors is not even our natural proclivity. It seems that we were born to inevitably fall into ditches, and yet we were also born with a divine spark, the Epinoa, which is linked to the imaginative faculty, but is much more. I believe it has something to do with our ability to adapt, to innovate, but not just external technology, but internally to even reconfigure the ecstatic thrust to evolve and ever transform. Thus, deception is not so despairing an experience. In fact, it might just be a damn good workout for our soul power, Satyagraha, as Gandhi decried. 2020 has been a collective cup of ayahuasca and we are really just in the thick of, say, the second hour. When purging is commonplace, exorcisms also, and truly the dark night of the soul is being forced upon us by the ferocious compassion of the dark mother aspect of goddess, who ayahuasca devotedly invokes. Chaos is becoming that much more real. Systemic collapses are no longer just on the horizon, but are trembling the very ground we stand upon. There's an ancient trigger for civil war brewing in the USA, but really, Think of it as a grand collective projection. And then we must ask what civil war is breaking out within our own souls. Deception has done a number on us for sure, and it's seemingly impossible to know what the fuck is true in the media miasma, the corrupt corporatism, the circus of politics, the tsunami of dishonesty, the viral divisiveness, the emotional plague, kudos for that one Wilhelm Reich. I swear there will come a breaking point where we will realize as a collective species that perhaps our silenced and persecuted ancient ancestors were right all along. And we have been collectively possessed by nefarious extraterrestrials. Gnostics dub them Archons. Moreover, it will become acutely clear how vehemently important truth is to be discerned and conveyed. How shamanic societies knew this and devoted whole systemic cultural methods to make certain that mindfulness practices were so pervasive that we could hold to sanity and resist the insanity that becomes us as we are victimized by the duplicity of psychic invasions. The truth is stranger than fiction, couldn't be more understated. Not now, not ever. It's why mystics were closest to truth teetering before what appeared madness to those impregnated by the status quo. The true spiritualist is always a sacred weirdo, but for those who are woke to the beauty of an individuated being, weirdness is something to revere. Is it time to get collectively freaky? I dare say if I was president, I'd hold nationwide ecstatic dances, make psychedelic medicines available to all administered by integrative shaman doctors, I'd bring back the Hieros Gamos rite, meaning every would-be king would have to be ultimately tested by a high priestess in a spectral ritual where he would have to make love to her and bring her to the highest ecstasy of sexual and loving bliss, to display both his power and sensitive tenderness. If he wasn't able, he wasn't fit to rule. Ah, the ancients knew some things, did they ever? I'd do much more too, because by goddess, if we are really going to enter into a time of healing, as some callow politicians are currently advising, it will take a revolution of love. Not bland, mediated sound bites by those who are most culpable in our mass manipulation. Have we had enough of that yet? Maybe we are going crazy, after all. Eckhart Tolle diagnosed us as collectively insane after all in the friggin' introduction of the power of now in one of the most sobering spiritual presages I've ever read. But truly, what is more important to remember is that despite whatever collective instability is fever pitching right now, our essence is something altogether mighty and noble. We are defiantly good. I believe it to the marrow of marrows. 
Our essential goodness is our original nature, and even the dastardly E.T. predators are just a part of a drama of our unfolding and their own. My take is that they are teaching us something of vital importance and vice versa. Some Gnostics even said they are our teachers. My own enduring contemplations on the matter have convinced me that they are indeed testing our spiritual metal, only to have us turn around to mentor them once our own soul powers have been vivaciously unleashed. When I consider what drew me after all to spirituality almost 20 years ago, it was simply how heroic and amazing spiritual humans seem to be, as if they'd figured out a secret path to unfolding the most excellent aspects of our humanity, becoming radiant beacons of virtue, timeless wisdom keepers, and even supernaturalists of miracle magic. It was no irony that my spiritual awakening was paralleled by the epilogue of my media studies at university, which awakened me to the profound, dark conspiracies afoot in the military-industrial complexes of our corporately fascist civilization. It seemed to me we were powerless before great lords of doom, and yet before the spiritual masters I felt hope, hope in the power of love and goodness to deconstruct all the demagoguery with the imperial simplicity of unrelenting kindness and spiritual sciences of oneness that slice through all the vicissitude of egoic knavery. I knew with great tears streaming from my eyes that if we just were good to each other, despite it all, that if we just loved, heaven would become earth by the single beat of a fully open human heart. Naive? Probably. Childish? Guilty. Hippy-dippy? I suppose. But on the other hand, yes, exactly. We are, as I stated, born naive, innocent, and those of us most individuated from my observation reclaim something of our child that never should have been exiled by the cunnings of social conditioning anyways. Remember that once, that unabashed lovingness, that uninhibited, constant laughter, that wish to continually embrace, the cuteness that hides still irrevocably, adorably behind all this civil armor. I think we have far less to defend against than this world would have us believe. I think if we all just denuded in a field together under the warm sun, danced to some beautiful music, and allowed our bodies and minds to be free, we might believe in God all at once, together, in a united eruption of terrestrial joy. I love you all. Whatever fucking side you're on, my gosh, I just love you. Because I've gone deep enough in my own self-inquiry to find it. That field Rumi was talking about. You know the one right, the one beyond right and wrong. The one where we are all naked, human, and just naturally beautiful. We gotta lean into that. So hard. So fearlessly now. Our world depends on it, now more than ever. <laughs>